So today we are tackling a subject that might be kind of obvious for people who are collecting watches for a while, but for some new people, some people who are just starting to collect, these items may not be very obvious. These are a few watches, there's about five that I have here listed that I think you should avoid whether you are a seasoned collector or just starting out. So let's get into the list and talk about five watches that you should avoid in your collection. So number one on this list is something that is very true to my channel, true to myself, the way that I collect. Do not buy a watch based on the fact that you think it's going to increase in value. Now, if you look at my collection, not many of my watches are any of those hype watches that people are talking about all the time. We're talking about Patek Philippe, AP, and of course, Rolex. I don't buy those watches because they are hype watches. And if you think that they're going to increase in value and really that's the only reason why you're buying the watch, definitely think twice about making that purchase. Usually that doesn't end up being the case. And especially now, if you are jumping on the hype train, you may be a little too late. Watch prices have been falling and they might continue to fall. We don't know what the future brings. A watch investment is still not a sound investment. It doesn't matter what many other YouTube channels say, watch investing isn't really the way to go. Buy what you love, and I think a lot of other channels do say that, buy what you love, and of course, you're going to be happy with your purchase. Don't worry about losing money on it, just buy smart in the first place. So in other words, don't overpay for a watch, and that sort of brings me to my second point, never pay retail for a watch. Never pay the full retail for a watch. Watches are always discounted. These days, it's harder and harder to find a watch at a discount. However, it's always best to buy a watch that has been discounted. And if you're paying over retail, then you're doing basically what I just said not to do in point number one, you're buying into that hype. You're spending more money on a watch that's not actually worth that money. So never pay retail. If you're buying smart, you'll be able to actually sell that watch for a better price in the future. Therefore, you would not lose money. You may not make money, but you will not lose money on that purchase. And of course, you get to enjoy that watch until you no longer enjoy it. And that's the point of collecting. You enjoy watches. And if you're not enjoying them, then you're obviously not a watch collector. Next on the list, never be influenced by anybody else when you are purchasing a watch. Always make a decision that is made from your heart. You have to enjoy a watch to be able to buy a watch. A lot of people I see buy watches based on the fact that they think other people will like that watch. And that is really not the way to go. You have to buy a watch that speaks to you. You have to like the design. You have to like the movement. Whether or not it is for everybody else, it doesn't matter. As long as you love it, that's all that matters in the end. So watch influence, things that you see on Instagram, on YouTube, and on Facebook, they're great to sort of consume, but in the end, you need to see the watch in person, see it for yourself, and really that is the best way of seeing if you really like a watch or not, and then make that decision for yourself. Ultimately, you have to wear the watch, so don't let anybody influence you in any of your purchases, including me. Next on the list, I think is pretty obvious, but this goes for anything. It really doesn't only pertain to watches. Don't buy a watch that you cannot afford. And take it from me, I've actually done this. I've purchased watches that I couldn't afford. They have these things where you could pay over time on certain websites, they charge you interest, and all this other stuff. Don't do it. It's not worth it. If you could afford a watch, buy the watch. Uh, I did that in the past, and I highly regretted it afterwards because obviously going into debt, for a watch, paying interest on a watch, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Only buy what you could afford, and of course, be happy with your purchase. Don't add stress to your life because you wanted a watch, and now you're paying monthly interest on a watch that you probably didn't need in the first place. So definitely keep that in mind. Never, ever buy a watch that you cannot afford. All right, the last two watches that I think you should avoid or never buy 
are obviously fake watches and fashion watches. I think every list that anybody has ever done about watches to avoid or watches not to buy, they're obviously going to bring up fake watches and fashion watches. Now, fashion watches are pretty hard to tackle because there are some fashion watches that are pretty cool, like Hermes or Chopard. There are few brands out there that are technically jewelry brands or fashion brands that make really nice watches. Ralph Lauren is one that comes to mind. I own a Ralph Lauren watch, it has a JLC movement. That is not a bad fashion watch. And technically, yes, that is a fashion watch. However, I think a lot of people refer to cheap fashion watches that are very badly made, and I kind of agree with that. However, if it's the only thing that you can afford, definitely think about getting a cheaper Timex or Seiko in replace of something like a Filippo Loretti. Now, I could see that Filippo Loretti have a lot of appeal to them because they make some watches that aren't that bad looking. But in the long run, you're gonna be happier with something like a Timex or a Seiko. And you also have a brand that you can count on, Seiko, very reliable watches. If you go the other route, you may not be as happy in the long run. So, more classic watches from brands like Timex, Citizen, and Seiko, while you're not gonna get those classic designs from Filippo Loretti and the like. And of course, last, replica watches or fake watches, it's kind of the same situation as fashion watches. You're never gonna be really happy with that purchase. There's a lot of different reasons why. One of those reasons why is because you're probably gonna always want the real thing. You're gonna run into somebody with a real watch and you're gonna feel bad about it. And maybe you won't. And if you don't, that's fine. But still, there are a lot of ramifications from buying fake watches. A lot of people say that they fuel drug cartels and things like that. I have no idea if any of that is real. However, in the long run, you're better off again buying a Timex, a Citizen, or a Seiko. You'll have something that's really nice, something that will last a very long time. And in the end, it's a genuine watch, it's a genuine article, and you're not having a fake on your wrist. A lot of people say fake people wear fake watches. I don't agree with all of that. Real people sometimes wear fake watches, and it just so happens I think it's education. I think people need to be educated about fake watches, they need to be educated about fashion watches, and in the end, I think they would make the right decision. Unless they're extremely, extremely focused in on brand, I don't think you're ever gonna turn a person like that away from a fake watch, and that's just the way it is. They want the brand, they don't care if it's fake. So some of those people are a lost cause. Anyway, I don't think any of the people watching this video to this point really care about fake watches or fashion watches anyway. Uh, I think you guys are probably real collectors. You're still here, so uh, obviously here we are. But tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think of this list that I made and the items that I brought up in this video? I love to make videos about this. I hope you guys find it useful. Please let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Please also don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog. I have some links in the description. Uh, if you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.